good. support him, you know? There, you there it there is. <laughs>on a number of walks she did awesome i did socializing with her and i took some videos i don't know if you do you have instagram i you know i just signed back up actually. okay because yeah. i posted stuff on our story of uh -huh. her and i was like i don't know if he's gonna see this because i forgot to ask him about it but um she actually played with a dog i even had her off muzzle with another dog Whoa. yeah i should let me pull up the video oh, since man. you never got to see it Aww. yeah here's bouncing around that's toaster Aw, playing. Yeah, she actually was playing. That's awesome. Yeah, and I put her with him, I think, two times prior to this on muzzle, just to, uh -huh. like, really get her used to him. So she was really familiar with him by this point, that I uh -huh. had her off muzzle with him. So I'm sure that made a difference. Oh, but, yeah. I mean, just to get her to that point was so cool. Oh, my God, that's awesome. Yeah, and they're, like, matching energy, too. I know, so. yeah. Yeah, he was a really good, a good playmate for her. Oh, that's great. I think what we'll do with Binks is we'll maybe just go for like a little walk. Okay. See how they do with a, with walking. Okay. Um, and then we'll bring back and we'll pop a muzzle on her and we'll kind of see how they do together. Okay. Does that sound good? Yeah, that sounds great. Cool. And they've never met, right, to clarify? They have. Okay. And it didn't go great. It okay. very brief. Okay. And, uh, but we immediately like separated them and then sure. we didn't try again after that. Sure, no, that's fair. Um, what happened when you guys initially Tried to introduce them that one time? Um, they were both on leashes, and got the lady like, kind of lunged towards her, and she just got Binks out of the way. Okay. 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 Just tell her, calm, turn and walk that way. No. Go ahead and correct her. No. There you go. Good. And so you're basically just going to enforce your walking expectation for her. So anytime her butt passes you, you can tell her no correct her and then go ahead and walk forward with her again. Very good. So we're using the parameters of our walk to start to decrease all of that intensity that she has towards Binks at that point. So we're gonna disintegrate a lot of that super hyperactiveness by just going for a walk and allowing it to kind of fizzle out a little bit. Pet him with people, then he's fine. Yeah. It depends on people. The looking behind, I'm okay with, as long as it doesn't cause her to break the walking parameters again. If she were to like look behind and like lag and not keep pace with you, you could correct for that as well. Because she's paying more attention to the dog than she is you at that point. And basically our whole goal, kind of like what Julia was saying, is that like Binks is cool as long as they just kind of leave him alone, <laughs> let him do his thing. So ideally that's the goal with her is to just teach her that like, no big deal. Yeah. Don't even worry about that dog. It's none of your business. And doing a walk like this allows them to be in the same space, but to have an external like goal. So it takes that pressure off of like, oh. how do we interact? What do we do? And it's like, we're just walking. Don't even worry about that. Just walk together. Go to like 35. No. There you no. go. She's like, yeah, yeah, I get it. I get it. But not really disengaging. You know what I mean? She's still rubbernecking and doing all that kind of stuff. So now we want to up it a little bit to just be like, knock it off. Force it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, like we're sick of it. You know what you need to be doing. Just do that. And that's kind of the beauty of, you know, doing five lessons before we got to this point is that now we have all of that in place yeah. to set those standards so that this can be as successful as possible. She's like, yep, you're right. I'm going to be over here. That's kind of what you're going to look for because 
If you guys are able to, I'd like you to do like some walks like this with them every once in a while. Yeah. Absolutely. So that way she can just continue to get more and more used to him being around. Yeah, I just want to be careful about doing it before we got a chance to do it. With oh, your for sure. sure. For fun. sure. No, I, that's awesome. That's the best way to go about it cuz like we mentioned before, like it's so hard to come back from doing things improperly <laughs> than making sure that you do it right right off the bat. Well, and it's hard because like the leash is part of her issue. Yeah. So it's like yeah. having her on leash to do it isn't great, but also you didn't have the tools to feel safe doing it off leash either. <laughs> so I'm initially basically gonna treat no. their interaction as if like he was a cat. No. How I would like train dogs to be around cats. Where any like coming in hot that she does to him, I'm just gonna correct her for. Yeah. So she learns that like if you're gonna engage with him, it needs to be like very low intensity and like nothing crazy. Because like I said, the goal is not necessarily that they'll be like buddies. We just want them to be around each other, right. you know, and be fine and safe mainly. Yeah. Um, and that's initially so like with my shepherd and my chihuahua that I was talking about, because of the size difference and how intense my shepherd can be, that's kind of the approach I took with them initially. Was like the shepherd needs to treat the chihuahua with like a ton of respect and really like give him space and stuff like that. As that like really weird like starts to drain over time and the novelty of the dog goes away, that's when I was able to allow a little bit more interaction to the point where now they can play and like be buddies. And it, I don't have to worry as much of it switching to that like weird place <laughs> that we talked about. So that's kind of the route that I would like to take with her and him too. And then I'm gonna have you leave his leash on and just drop it. I mean, kind of do whatever he wants. He's allowed to, to wander around. And like I said, any coming in hot, I'm just gonna correct her for. <laughs> he said, I don't know about this. <laughs> do you have to come back through? I just said I Okay, that's fine. My uh, And so initially, like I said, I'm just setting that boundary of like too much, man. You can't too coming in way too hot because again, the room for error with this size and that size is so small. So you have to set those boundaries really firm. And I'm at 100, so I'm all at the highest because this is stuff you don't want to joke around with, right? So if you want to interact with him, you need to find a better way to do it because that's not how we're going to do that, basically. I know. It, we're basically just creating a little force field, yeah. you know? <laughs> Binks is like, I like this. He's trying. <laughs> so that was a little bit better of an approach. Yeah. There you go. We're going to see how he respond, she responds to his corrections. Yeah, this is all totally fine. they tangle you up. <laughs> totally fine. He can, he can set those boundaries. The what, only thing I'm concerned about is obviously making sure she respects those boundaries. So he has every right to say go away and we just want to make sure that she listens to it. And she's been yielding each time that he's growled and kind of snarled. She backs up. She's going back in for more sniffs but she does back up. And, and having socialized her previously, that's why I wanted to be able to get her to a good point socially before I did this, is I have a better gauge on like 
what she's thinking when she does certain body language stuff. So right now, this is, initially she was a lot more like intense and fixated when I gave those corrections, but now she's just very curious. And so there, no swatting the dog in the face. <laughs> <laughs> and by catching it, so the reason why we're correcting really harshly for like those, even those little things like that is because you see how it shuts it down immediately and she's like, okay, I'm disengaging and backing off. If you wait and you allow little things to go and build and build and build, when you give a correction, her brain is already like way up here and it's sometimes it's just not even going to work. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because she's already way past that point. So it's like you really have to capitalize on the little moments to really make it clear to her that like we're not going to tolerate that at all. Because could I have corrected at like 40 and maybe it worked? Sure, but then we're kind of playing with this like, did it actually work or did it just like work in the moment? <laughs> Is she still going to be willing next time to be like, that actually wasn't so bad, so I'm just going to do that again. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And ultimately, I mean, even if we get to this point where they just kind of do their own thing separately, totally fine. So another thing with dogs that ideally at some point are gonna cohabitate is when you start adding in like the human interaction with the dogs. Because a lot of times, so something I'm super strict about is like if I'm giving affection to a dog, the other dogs cannot come in and butt in on that because then you become a resource that they're gonna fight over. So typically what's good to practice is like if you're petting Binks and she starts to come over, like, hey, I want in on that, giving corrections for that kind of stuff too. Yeah, go for it. We'll see what she does. He said, please? I bet if, why don't you join it? No. She said, bye, never mind. Yeah, I was going to say, why don't you pet him, too? That'll be even harder for him. He's loving this. <laughs> Mine does the same thing, like kicking with like the spot on their back. Loves it. Very good. No, oh, that's great. Because stuff like that, it's like it's seemingly cute to begin with because you're like, oh, they all want petted at the same time. But like, and sometimes our instinct is to like, oh, I'll pet them both so that they know that like they don't have to be jealous of each other or whatever. But ultimately, what you're doing is just reinforcing like the competition that's going on between the two dogs. And they're learning that they can solicit something from you and control it, basically. So like stuff like that, food, toys, those are all things that can cause issues as well if you're not being very strict with those of like if they have bones or things that they have, they can't like switch back and forth and take it from each other and everything. It's like if it's yours, it's yours and vice versa. Um, a lot of external triggers can cause um, issues between dogs. So like if your dog gets super reactive out the windows or when people ring the doorbell or stuff like that, that energy that they're throwing at the distraction, they turn on each other and then you have an issue that way too. So those are important things to make sure that individually they both have a pretty good handle on so that you don't run into issues that way too. So like with my three dogs in my house, like I don't have anything just out. It's like if I sit down for the night, I'll give my dogs things but it's because like I can still watch and like monitor if I need to. Um, they don't just have open access to stuff like that. Yeah, and like with food in the house, like I, I feed my dog scheduled meal times. They get 15 minutes to eat it and then it goes back up. And I'm monitoring as they're eating so that they're not switching bowls and oh, I'm gonna go over here and see your food now that I'm done eating. Like they get corrected if they try to impose on any of the other dogs while they're eating. Um, and even once the bowls are empty, I don't even allow them to go over and like look at the bowl and make sure it's empty and stuff like that. That's not yours. Stay away from it type of thing. So being really strict about the resources and then making sure that you don't have like external behaviors that the dogs are doing that could cause issues between them too. Oh lady. 
Yeah, and here's where, so now if Binks comes over and tries the butt in, which him being there is fine, but if he were to try to like weasel through and want attention, then with him, you would also need to teach him, like, this isn't your business, you need to get out of here too. All right, good. And like those real, so like with her, she gets so excited so easily. <laughs> those are the moments too that you wanna watch. Like, okay, so she's getting a little bit overexcited. So as I'm petting her, I'm gonna be really mindful that she doesn't take that excitement and then be like, boom, you know what I mean? And like go towards Binks, even if it's not in an aggressive way. Again, anything super high energy right now, we don't want. Because when she gets high energy, that's when you make bad choices. <laughs> so any interaction with him needs to be like very calm and chill and no big deal. If you don't put the latch like all the way in lock position, yeah. so her crate, she can open it. Up. Yeah, it's yeah, so like you want to, what kind of crate does she have? Is it like a wire one? Big metal wire, yeah, yeah. So you could look into, and I would probably recommend getting like one that is essentially you cannot get out of it yeah. if you're gonna have them together just because I think you'd probably want that peace of mind of like, she can't get out yeah. <laughs> when we're not there. So like this brand, they're a couple hundred bucks. They're a little bit pricier, but they last forever and they're super, super sturdy. You can also get like for a little bit cheaper, you can get crates that are designed like this, but just bigger. bigger yeah, and those are, you're probably looking at maybe like a hundred bucks for her size. Okay maybe a little bit less, um, and those can be a little bit more secure as well. The wire ones are probably the easiest to get out of because there's so many like seams that they can like pull apart or if they hit the latches enough, it'll pop open like you said. Whereas like these ones where you have to like squeeze together to get out, it's a lot more difficult. Yeah, that's great. These flies. <laughs> it's so funny. I know. It's cracking me up. So I would say like things you could do with them is obviously the walking. I think it would be super good. If you guys are like just spending time together hanging out at someone's place or whatever, you could muzzle her. And you could do like a portion where like they're loose together and you just enforce the boundaries that we talked about. Oh, like she came in slow that Yeah, she was a lot more respectful that time. Um, enforce the boundaries that we talked about. And then, yeah, just ignore them if you can. Um, and then you can also do like a, a bed stay for periods of it where you could also just put her on a bed command and make her stay there while he kind of does his own thing and she just learns how to just not be a part of it. At this point, I would say the times that they spend time together, you want to make very intentional so that it can be really productive and set up for success really well. Um, if you just wanna spend time together and not worry about the dogs, then just don't even bring them together. Yes. You know what I mean? Make it very purposeful when you do it. Because um, at this point, I think she just needs exposure and more time of being around him to like let the novelty wear off. Mm -hmm. I mean, in theory, that would be nice, but at the dog park, it's so unpredictable about the other dogs, you know, because just in the way that we've described, like, you want to make sure that the communication between the dogs is good and being respected and all that kind of stuff. Like, you can't anticipate what type of dogs are going to be at the dog park. <laughs> and so you could have a dog that comes in that is not quite the temperament that it should be to be at a dog park. And maybe she corrects the dog, rightfully so, and then that dog's like, okay, now we're fighting. Yeah. And now you have a big problem on your hands because now she got into a dog fight and she's like, whoa. <laughs> and that just opens up a whole nother world, you know? Yeah. So that's stuff, I, I wouldn't recommend it. Okay. I would keep it isolated to like the two of them and then the dogs that we can use here. Because like Toaster, for instance, um, the dog she was playing with, he's, we know him inside and out and we're super familiar with him and I know that like even if she did something stupid, he's not going to escalate the situation and make it any worse. Right. 
So until she's gotten more fluent in dog speak and how to do it properly, the dogs that you put her with need to be like bomb proof. Right. Where they're gonna be like, you did something stupid, but I'll give you a little bit of grace on that. Very nice. What questions do you guys have? Anything? Can we take them to the park and like sit with them? Mm -hmm. like, can they I would say if they're gonna interact, like you're gonna do potential interaction and like really close quarters stuff, I would have it on. Okay. I would have it on for now until further notice. Um, but like if you're gonna do what we did outside where you just go for a walk together and you go to the park and you sit on the bench and like ladies sitting over here and Binks is over here, then that's probably fine. But if you're gonna do like interaction type stuff, I would have it on. Honestly, this is good because all of these like external distractions like I was talking about while they're kind of cohabitating together, it's good to see how they take in like high excitement around them and still kind of interact with each other in the same way. Did he try to sniff her? Uh-huh. Aw. Just a little exuberant? Yeah. Okay. Was she like going crazy as in like she was like playful and excited or like she was like, she get away from some, me? Like playful nipping okay. and stuff like that. And he would kind of like jump on her and mouth a little bit. Okay. Okay. Um, Did it seem pretty reciprocal? Yeah. Okay. It was all, it was all healthy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just a little annoying after a while. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Just trying to check it out. <laughs> no, that's good. Um, with stuff like that, I mean, as long as the play is like, evenly balanced, like it seems like both dogs are enjoying themselves. Mm -hmm. um, even if it's a little bit rougher, like that's fine, usually. Yeah. Um, typically what'll happen is then it'll kind of escalate to a point where one dog might get sick of it and give a correction. And mm -hmm. then you just wanna make sure that the other dog backs off at that point. Yeah. Um, so just watching the body language a little bit. If it just gets obnoxious and you're like, dude, we just wanna like chill, can you stop? You can tell him to like knock it off and if he doesn't, then give a correction for it. Okay. Um, and then at that point, if you need to, you can put, if the other dog doesn't have as much training, you could put the other dog on a leash and like separate him a little bit if you need to. Yeah. He, I mean, he's gotten corrected by older dogs before. Yeah. This was a younger one where like, yeah. she didn't know what to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you could tell that she was like overwhelmed yeah. and just didn't really know how to get him to stop, you can always just tell him no and correct him, mm -hmm. you know, okay. so that he learns to like back off a little bit in those mm -hmm. situations. You've been a good boy. Yeah. yeah I hear oh, you can hear your hair cut. You're gonna look so handsome. So with the come command, we're going to go down to a lower level okay. because we're going to use the continuous stem to start shaping it. So I'm gonna tell him come, and then if he needs some help, we're gonna hold guide with the leash. Yep. As soon as he starts to yield to me, I'll release the pressure. So he doesn't have to get all the way here. He just has to be like on his way. Um, my goal is that he comes to me and he is close enough that I can touch him without having to like step to get there and that he stays with me until I release him. Does the pressure and the continuous stop at the same time? Yes. Mm -hmm. Wes, come. Good job. You were a little unsure about it, but you found your way here. Yeah, that's a good job. Very nice. Well, hold on. You have something stuck in your doodle hair. <laughs> My dog, I feel like every time he comes in from outside, I'm like picking oh twigs yeah. and leaves off of him. You guys just collect everything. He was a puppy. Okay. Wes, come. 
So now I'm going to hold and release. And now if he veers, I could have re-engaged it, but I gave him a second and he made his way here anyways. Good job, buddy. Okay. Wesley, come. Good job. Very nice. He said, oh, this is fun. Now you're into it. Okay. After I give like my pets as a reward, I generally will stop and wait a few seconds before I release because I want to make sure they're still committed to staying with me even when they're not getting affection. Because a lot of times you'll stop petting them and then they'll be like, okay. <laughs> and then they just walk away. Wes, come. Good job. So there I didn't do anything. I could tell he was like thinking about it. So I just waited him out a little bit. Wes, come. And we're going to help and release. Good job. Very good. And still just saying that command one time and just enforcing it as we need to. Okay. Good boy. Wes, come. Good job. Very nice. Nope, he did all that on his own. Okay. Wes, come. Good boy. And in context like that, even though he was already with me and even though he was going to come to me regardless, you can still say it, still use it as a repetition. Because all that really matters this week is that he's hearing the word come and he's doing that behavior a ton. So that way he's really, really getting... Um, the classical conditioning of it at that point. Okay. This week with this is less about trying to set him up in difficult situations to make him do it, and it's more about practice. Just tons and tons of practice. Come. Uh-huh. Okay, and that's why usually for like our walking, on leash walking, why we use come as well. It's because ultimately they mean the same thing, which is just like be in my bubble. One is just mobile and one is stationary. But by using the same command, it's super easy to transition it into an off leash walk. Because basically you just say come, he comes to you and you start moving and he's like, oh, I know this. Yep. Yep. Good. Yep. It's just less words for them to have to learn, yeah. especially when it's the same criteria, yep. you know. Wes, come. Good job. To make it like fun for him and really speed up the recall, as soon as he makes that initial effort to come to you, if you do that little like backwards jog and like get them all excited, then that's gonna just speed them up the rest of the way. Okay. I typically am always um, intentional on making sure that he's the first one initiating it though, and then I add in the excitement because I don't want him reliant on me being excited yep. <laughs> to come to me. Come. Holding. And release. And so there you can see how even just holding and without even having to add in the leash, he knew exactly what yeah, it meant at that point. Right yep. Good job. And I have him on a two. Okay. Um, especially like smaller dogs, it's, you know, super excited to see each other. And then um, if he has jumped or anything, it's been, you know, no. Good. And as he like continues to mature, that's basically, it's, it's more of a making sure that you feel confident in knowing how to like address the things that come up yeah. more than like trying to make him be perfect. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cause it's kind of unrealistic, especially at his age. Like until, yeah, he's, he's gonna be goofy. He's gonna do stupid stuff and he's gonna like 
figure out what boundaries can I push, and maybe today I can. Once they hit like two and a half, three, that's when you can be pretty confident that like they're not gonna really throw a curveball at you. You know what I mean? Like how they are is kind of how they're gonna be. But up until that point, you just never know because they're just growing and maturing and everything's different every day and all that kind of stuff. High five. Oh, thank you so much. That was so nice. All right, you're up. All right, buddy. There you go. <laughs> Come. He's the doodle that anyone who gets a doodle hopes they get. He is. Thank you. You're the best, buddy. Come. This will be nice because after next week, mm -hmm. you'll be able to feel more confident like doing more of the actual off-leash stuff. Because nice. like you said, he's been good so far, but yeah. you want to make sure you no, cover your bases. Can, like, um, when he has an off-leash, will they just like, protect the area that my family can have? Or yeah. I knew he was fine. Like, even then, it was sometimes like, I would say calm, but I had to act decided. Like yep. The second time I said it. Yep. Sometimes he would come, but other times it would take yeah. a little bit, especially when he was just bad. Yep. Because he didn't quite know what was like on the other side of choosing not to. Yes. And that's really the most, to me, that's how you really like foolproof a recall is mm -hmm. the dog needs to know what happens if they don't. <laughs> right. Because then they're like, that sucks, so I need to listen when they call me. Because when I do sit, stay, yeah. Yep. Yeah. And so it's like there's when you're doing off leash stuff, like the the danger goes up because you're allowing him to explore with so many more things that are far more motivating a lot of times than food or affection or yeah. we could ever be. So it's like if we're allowing him off leash to like potentially chase after wildlife or find a dead animal carcass on the ground, or you know, all of these different things that for a dog, it's like, pff, I don't care about what you have, this is so much cooler. They have to, the only thing that's really gonna be motivating at that point, obviously just a ton of training, but beyond that, them knowing the consequence that comes with ignoring you. <laughs> so this will kind of set him up for that, to be able to really set him up for success in those situations to where you feel a lot more confident with it. <laughs> Much better. Much better. The same things are usually and those when it comes to that for how we get off. I mean it depends on what you're saying and what the expectation is. Like, if you say okay, yeah. then he doesn't really have an obligation to get off. Okay is just more so like the obligation that you were under with the previous command is gone. Yeah. So if he wants to stay there, he can. He doesn't have to. Okay. Um, so, but say like you have him, you're working on this in the house and he goes to the bed just on his own accord, and you say come, then yes, you could use the e-caller to follow through on it, because you're adding obligation with the come. But with okay, you're removing obligation at that point. So I think he has that down because the only reason I was having to get the walk because I was trying to improve. Yeah, to exactly. Him, yeah. But now that he's pretty much doing it from the mm -hmm. river, yeah. I don't have to get him to come up anyway. Yeah, and at this point, you know, once you get to a point where they're very fluent with the command, they're doing it well, they're not protesting and stuff like that, you can really kind of just use it when you need it type of thing and not do a lot of training sessions around it. And I find that they get less like rigid and stiff with the commands when you start doing that because the reason he's probably not getting off of the bed right now is because he's like, you're just gonna make me go back. <laughs> 
Yeah, exactly. So I think if you back off of it for a little bit and just use it in context where you practically need to, he'll start getting a lot more like loose and being like, oh, okay, so okay means I really can get off because I'm not immediately going to be expected to do something again. They just pick up on the patterns and they just start anticipating at that point. It was funny because I have, a, I had a client earlier today that has two dogs and they were talking about how they're like, we'll just be like hanging out and all of a sudden one dog will just walk up and start sniffing the other dog's butt, like right in the middle. Of, and I was like, don't discourage that though because that's like very normal dog behavior. Like to us, it seems weird and we're like, ew, gross, we're eating. But like if you discourage normal stuff like that, then they start finding other ways to interact that aren't as normal and are a little more abrasive. And so you inadvertently can create issues that way. Yeah, essentially. It is funny though with dogs that live together that do that, because it's like, you've literally been in the same room for eight hours. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, <laughs> why? Yep. The novelty is kind of worn off yeah. with that. But that's, just, that's like more natural, I think, for dogs to have like a smaller circle of dogs they see a lot, yeah. rather than like, a massive pool of random dogs that it's a new dog every single day, you know? Because you think about dogs, like, they're, they're social and they're pack animals, but, like, they tend to have their pack wolves and they stay with their family groups, you know? They don't, like, oh, there's a new pack of wolves, let's cohabitate, that never happens. If anything, it's, like, a territorial thing. So with dogs, it, it's more natural for them to be, like, I have three or four dogs that I see frequently, rather than like, oh, let me go to this dog park and meet 20 brand new dogs <laughs> that I've never met before in my life. Because like you said, the more time they spend together, the more comfortable they get with each other, the more they understand each other's communication styles and cues and all that kind of stuff. Like you'll have those rare dogs that are social butterflies that just love meeting everybody and everything all the time and do great with it. But I would say it's, more typical that you have a dog who's like, I have my group and that's good yeah, enough. Okay. I don't need anything else. <laughs> he might be the rare social <laughs> butterfly. Um. If anything, he's, he just is, he has a very like, a, like a peaceable almost personality where like, even if you met a dog who like, didn't really like him, he'd probably be like, that's fine, yeah. whatever. <laughs> I'll just stay over here, don't worry about it. When you practice these this week, um, you can practice them in whatever environments you want. At this point, since we're just doing a lot of helping, that's fine. Um, with the sits and things like that, there's nothing inherently wrong with doing a sit and then doing a recall. Mm -hmm. um, just watch that you don't do it a lot because what will tend to happen is they'll start to anticipate the recall and they'll just start breaking their sits. Gotcha. So because you think up until this point we've done mainly like when he's in a stationary command we usually will walk back to him to release him from it mm -hmm. so he's been pretty content to just like wait there because yep. he's like I don't get to move until you come back. Mm -hmm. If we do a lot of recalls out of the sits then he'll pick up on that pattern and he'll just start doing it. Gotcha. Um, and eventually, like I said, like, it's not bad to practice those things, but as he's still learning the come command, you just want to be careful with it so he doesn't get confused. Okay. Think, um, good job, buddy. Knowing to not do the set will be good because we'll just pretty much do exactly this yeah. all week. Because um, also, too, you think about doing a recall out of a command and doing a recall out of thin air is like two very different mental spaces for the dogs mm -hmm. because if they're already in a command, they're already focused on you. Yeah. So doing a recall then is pretty simple. Mm -hmm. But if the, he's sniffing or he's getting pets or he's like doing something more organic that's also interesting, yeah. being able to recall out of that is like a whole nother aspect of his brain that he has to tap into. So. It's good to practice. Would it be both. good just to kind of like, because usually I only put the e collar on if we're going for a walk or mm -hmm. we're doing training. Yeah. Maybe just like if I'm hanging out, leave it on mm -hmm. and then sporadically mix in. Yeah, you could.
you can. Um, the, because the e-collar at this point, I would say, at this point in the training, we are kind of transitioning into, it'll become more of like a consistent, anytime you're with him supervising him and he's not like in the kennel, yeah. you should probably have it on mm -hmm. or like overnight and stuff. Um, because there might be like sporadic nuisance behaviors he does that you mm -hmm. need to correct for. Um, somebody could ring the doorbell and show up and you need to put him on the bed command yeah. or, you know, things like that. So I think at this point it is probably best to just have him wear it anytime you're supervising. Okay. Um, and then moving forward, it'll just be consistently used until, you know, he's fully mature and we've gotten him into a really steady, predictable habits of his behaviors okay. and stuff like that at that point. Hey guys, it's Bridget with Miracle Canine and we're back for another client spotlight. And this week I want to talk about a very special dog, um, a dog who's come a very, very long way, which is Mr. Apollo. And Apollo came to us through a rescue and this was a very intense dog. He had a really hard time sitting still, had very, very severe reactivity issues and the shelter had a little bit of a difficulty placing him with the right home. Um, we did a board and train for him in hopes that training would have him have an easier transition to finding an adopter. And luckily it certainly had, um, along came his owner, Greg, and I don't think Greg quite knew what he was getting into at first with adopting Apollo. It's a very headstrong dog and Greg is a very sweet man. In the first couple weeks with them, as Apollo was transitioning into Greg's home, I think he ended up like jumping out of a two-story window and just putting Greg through a lot. And of course we were there to support every step of the way as they started making their connection and he was putting expectation and structure into Apollo's life. And slowly but surely, Greg has shown up to every follow-up lesson we've scheduled. He has come to multiple group classes and he's really put a lot of time and effort into Apollo's growth. And through that, we've seen major changes in Apollo's behavior. This dog that could barely sit still a couple months ago at the edge of his seat constantly, just freaking out, very unhealthy mindset, has transformed into this dog that is truly loved by his owner. And the reactivity is so much more manageable. Him coming to group classes every week, Apollo's behavior has shifted and changed. And he's still his lovable Apollo self but he has much more guidance now and he's much happier with Greg and seeing somebody go from having a dog that was very high energy and very chaotic to starting to see the dog transition and the connection Apollo and Greg have is very, very beautiful. So we wanted to take a moment to say, Greg, we've realized all the work you've put in with Apollo. We appreciate you coming to group classes, the follow-ups and daycare. We hope you continue to work with us and good job, Apollo. Hi guys. Coda, what's up girl? How you been? Oh my gosh, how you been? Get up here. Oh, I know. I know, I've missed you. How's she been? Hi. Yeah? Nice. We love to hear that. Oh, I know. I know. You love to give hugs, but you're not really the greatest at them. You try your best. Um, cool. So no big issues at home or anything like that? No. Awesome. That's great. I know. Sure enough, she is. There you are. Look at her striking her best pose. Um, how have the cum commands been going? She's getting better. Yeah? A little bit better? Yeah, she's much better with it. Okay. So we're getting there. Are you able to, uh, so initially she's not doing it, but you're able to follow through to the point that she is doing it then? Yeah. Okay. It takes like two times to say it and then she ends up. Good. If we just kept okay. her outside all day and night, she'd be fine. <laughs> <laughs> it is funny how like most of her behaviors that were not great all were just like in the house, yeah. yes. like isolated in yes. what she considered her domain. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Still a little bit nervous. Yeah, it's, I mean, like if she's on a walk, she's perfectly fine. Okay. But at the house, she wants to go back in. Okay. She has so much energy. Oh, right now. 
I know. Well, that's good because I was thinking, <laughs> I was thinking we could go to the park. Do you want to go to the park? So here, go ahead and tell her no and correct her. No. There you go. Tell her come. Come. Correct her again. No. And tell her come, come. again. Again. No. That's what she does when <laughs> With the martingale, she shouldn't be able to get out of it. So if she starts doing that like backing up type of stuff, just stand your ground. Don't necessarily like fight her on it physically, but just stay where you're at. So that way okay. she knows that she can't, you know, lead you out of it and just continue with the corrections until she comes back to you. Because ideally we want to work through this to where we're not having to physically make her do something. We're teaching her how to just mentally be compliant with what we're asking. And it doesn't matter that you're anxious or you're terrified, like there's nothing going on. You know what I mean? It doesn't have to be that big of a deal. So that's kind of how you'll work her through that stuff is by making her do it no. and then her realizing, oh, this isn't Come. as awful as I thought it was going to be. No. Yep, stay right where you are. Come. No. Mm-hmm. Do it Come. again. Come. No. Very good. Very nice. And then go ahead and tell her come again. Tell see if come. she'll come to you now. Good Very good. That didn't take long. Yeah. She said, well, that didn't work. <laughs> My guess is once we like do head back in the direction of the cars that she'll probably once she sees take the car, off. take off yep. and start to pull. And that's another moment that it's important to make sure that you're correcting and fixing that and making her walk there very politely. Because that will just reinforce her thinking that she needs to, like, escape. Because mm -hmm. this is just so terrible. Yeah. It's like, it's not, it's not terrible. Just because, you know, you're anxious to get back to the car doesn't mean that you can break the rules again and stuff. So, And this is your car, right? Yeah. Let's just walk straight past it. See how she does with that. Very good. <laughs> now she's like, did you guys miss it? <laughs> good job. All right, now we'll turn around and we'll go back. And I'm going to have you walk right past it again. And if she veers out towards the vehicle, tell her no and correct her. No leash pulling. Good. Very good. All right, and then when you walk back up to it this time, when you get close to it, just have her sit and have her hold a sit. She's so lazy. I'm going to work on one thing that I want to work on her with. Very good. She literally... Yeah, a lot of times, like, it feels like be, you're being rude, but a lot of times how you engage with people like that is determining whether they're going to try to randomly stick their face or their hand right in front of your dog or not. Exactly. And I think those people, if they knew, you know, how her personality and how she was, they would also appreciate a little rudeness yeah. over getting right. bit by a dog as well. Because it was funny, we were talking about that a couple podcasts ago, Bridget brought it up and I was like, you're so right. She goes, people will ask a lot of questions that aren't, can I pet your dog when that's what they're intending to ask. Like they'll be like, is your dog friendly? Yeah. And you're kind of caught in this position where you're like, well, I mean, she's not like not friendly. Yeah. So you'll say yes. And then they're like, okay. Right. <laughs> and they're like right down there. <laughs> it's like, well, that's not what you asked at all. Yeah. Now, you, now, you know now I know. Now yeah. Not yes. <laughs> yes. I, you know, after doing this job for this long, I just assume every dog doesn't want me anywhere near them anytime I'm in public, and that works out for well for me. We're buddies now. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Right, right. Didn't you? Isn't it wild that you're at a point where you're gonna like miss her? 
Did you ever think you'd get to that point? No. <laughs> no. I really didn't. I was gonna say if we if you hadn't done this training, you would have probably been like, probably shoot, yeah. get out. Yeah. Good riddance. Look at that. You've you've improved so much, Coda, that they're fighting over custody for you. So you can tell her no and correct her. There you go. Good. Because even, even though she's doing that because she's spooked and she's scared, we want to make sure that even when she's scared, she doesn't have that tendency to just like run. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because that can be dangerous. Yeah. So we just want to inhibit that a little bit and be like, it's cool if you're scared, but you got to be able to still keep your brain and your wits about you and yeah. still I think about what you're doing. I didn't know if I should correct her for that because she's yeah. scared. I don't know if that's no, no, you should, um, because even, even though, like we were just talking about, she's nervous, she still needs to be able to comply with what you ask her to do. So you still need to correct her for that stuff. Is there anything in particular that you guys really want to focus on for like her last lesson? Pooping in the house. Not a fan. Well, I mean, me like neither, but house. I think that's a you guys yeah, thing at this agree. point. I'm, you I'm know, you yeah, you just you have ask. to, I know. <laughs> I think, and I think closing off access to it is important. Like you guys are doing being diligent about taking her out after she eats, because we know that's typically when it's going to happen. And then from there, it's just supervising her and trying to make sure she doesn't have access to it. She did that when we first got her and then she stopped for months. And yeah. She's back at it again. Like we did the whole take her out, give her a treat, praise her, whatever. Yeah. She was good for a couple months, and now all of a sudden she's like, I'm gonna start again. Yeah. A lot of times it's just like once they do it and they know it's an option, they're like, this is easier. Yeah. You know, I might as well. I mean, typically I don't because it's more so like a, just like a consistency issue more than anything. Cause like with peeing and pooping I, I try not to punish for stuff like that because it's a natural behavior that they have to do and it's like if you start punishing them for pooping then, they don't. then it's like they're almost scared to go to the bathroom <laughs> they're not really connecting like oh I'm they're mad at me because I'm going in the house they're just connecting like I'm pooping and I'm getting corrected like you know what I mean so you can almost cause another issue by doing that if they're like marking like how male dogs will mark, and some females will do it, that's different. You can correct for that behavioral issue, but like if it's truly them going to the bathroom, it's more so just a human issue that we just need to remove access, supervise them more, and just be more consistent with the schedule. Okay. The dining room has the deck off, it goes to the backyard. Yeah. That's where she always goes, so she, she's almost there. Yeah, yeah, you know? and that's usually what will happen is like they'll be like in that area, and sometimes, usually if that's the case, what, what's happened in the past is like, they've been there, like, I gotta go, no one notices, so then they can't hold it and they go to the bathroom. And then they go, oh, well, let's do that next time. Yeah, that was easy. <laughs> exactly, yeah. And you yeah. know what she does, because she comes running yep. in all excited. <laughs> and we have hardwood floors, so she's Scooby-Dooing all the way across yep. them, and you're like, oh, She said, she I just pooped. You know what you did. <laughs> And then when you go in there, she runs and hides because she's like, uh-oh. Yes. I'm supposed to do that there. Yeah. So. And and that sometimes, too, gets misconstrued because people will be like, oh, well, they know it's wrong because then they, like, run away. But in reality, if they knew it was wrong, and they wouldn't be doing it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And really what's happening is her response is in response to you, not the thing that she just did. You know what I mean? Because like you said, after she does it, she's pumped. Yes. She's like, I feel great. Yeah. <laughs> it's just that when you see the poop and you're like, you shit in the house again and your vibe gets mad, yeah. then she's like, oh no. And yeah. then she's running away from that. Okay. So it's not that she knows that she, she shouldn't have pooped there. It's that she knows you're mad. Okay. And so then she's scared because she's like, yeah. oh no, they're mad at me. Yeah. So you're saying I failed again. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we're, you, this I is a safe space. Hard for him. We're all learning here. We're all learning wait, wait. here. Don't you two, aren't you a part of this? Yeah, a little bit. It's just my feeling. I don't know if I'm right or wrong and maybe never know, but initially it was always more with her. We talked about that. Yeah. And if I walked her or we walked her, we didn't really have all those issues. It was more mm -hmm. like her protecting her. Yeah, you know? for sure, for sure. And well, she, 
that dogs will like whatever their sense of comfort is it will like embolden them to like act in a way that maybe they traditionally wouldn't because they're not brave enough so because you were like her sense of comfort and the house is where she was comfortable that's why you saw all of those behaviors really pop up whereas like same thing where if i probably had taken her and you guys left that first day i probably wouldn't have had a lot of the issues that we had right. but it's because you guys were there still that she was like tough guy yeah. you know yeah. so no, that's you're, you're that's pretty right. typical because for her it's all coming from like an insecurity place mm -hmm. even though a lot of it could have appeared to be like dominant and like bully and type stuff like that truly i mean especially because like you guys have said she's gotten better as far as like affection she's more affectionate she was just scared she was. you know so and probably not very trusting you know she was probably house mm -hmm. to house and not oh yeah very long, so. Mm -hmm. yeah so the confidence was really what's yeah. created most of the change yep. and you stepping up to the plate and like deciding to be like a leader for her yeah, rather you, than you, like you the failing. the comfort I didn't say that. He did. Um, no, you you were doing what people were telling you to do. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you were doing what other people were telling you to yeah. do. So you were just being given bad information, honestly. Yeah. You shouldn't be allowed to do that. I. It's a shame. You know, it is. It really is. It's a shame. It's people take advantage of people that are in very vulnerable positions with their dogs. And. I think some may believe that they're doing good with. Yeah. yeah. I think I I agree. I think there's some that probably think that they're they're helping and they're doing good but i think that that excuse runs thin when you've been doing it long enough to stop to see that you're not seeing results yeah. I mean, you, should, you know what i mean like, like if the dog is learning and growing right yeah well they should be too exactly yeah. exactly so and we took her completely off of this tail yeah, yeah nice and good <laughs> is she on any other meds no nice because she started on what she was on gabapentin Trazodone, Citalopram, also Prozac. Yeah. She's not on anything now. So. Look at that. I actually said the same thing you said. It was just confidence. Oh, yeah. The, the drugs weren't doing anything. Yeah. She just needed confidence. Yeah, no, just confidence. Very good. And that was perfect. She was like, I think I need to leave. When that dog was going by and you just told her to come back and you were like, no, you don't. No big deal. Good job. Yeah, I actually... I went back through her Instagram and I was like looking through everything from the beginning. I was having a good time because I was just I was just like loving all of her cute little pictures. But I was like, see, I would see some of the other training stuff that you were doing with her, like yeah. what people were doing. And I had like I was like, I am so mad right now because yeah. like I would see that they'd be like, oh, we just did a lot of clicking and treating yes. from a distance today. And I'm like. What? You've done that for three weeks? Yes. Like, and what? That's what I was doing every time. Same thing you did. Yeah, I'm like. <sighs> yeah, they never touched her. They never got within like two feet from her themselves. She had to walk up to them and they were sitting down. They wouldn't stand up next to her. Like. So they were scared of her. They were scared of her, basically. And she even had a muzzle on, so I was like, she can't bite you. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know? No, you guys have done a really good job with her. She has come a long, long way. And. I appreciate that you guys trusted the process and stuff that I walked you through because, I mean, after working with as many people as you did and not getting results, I can imagine going into something new, you're like, here we go again. Well, I was like, I'm going to go to Miracle Canine. I've been watching their YouTube videos, and they're like... But then she showed me, and I was like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, this... Like, Is it another click and treat because we're not doing it? I'm yes. Like, no. Yes. Uh, <laughs> like you're not wasting more money and I'm not wasting my time. You're yes. Not doing that. No. Well, I appreciate it because it's been a lot of fun working with her. She's opened up quite a bit. Yes.